Welcome to the program. I am your host, Andrew Wilkow. It's 8 p.m. here on the East Coast. I guess we all survived the eclipse, right? Nothing crazy really happened. I am free speech to a fault. But what I'm about to play you is not coming from the Middle East or some radicalized neighborhood in Europe. It's right here in the United States. The Israel-Hamas wars moved from uncommitted to death to America. Malcolm X said, and I quote, we live in one of the rottenest countries that, have ever, that has ever existed on this earth. It's not Genocide Joe that has to go. It's the entire system that has to go. Any system that would allow such atrocities and such devilry to, a ha to happen and would support it, such a system does not deserve to exist on God's earth. And so when these fools ask us if Israel has the right to exist, the chant death to Israel has become the most logical chant shouted across the world today. Death to America, basically calling for an infatata against the United States. We were told by Joe Biden that the greatest threat to our national security was domestic white supremacist terrorism. And the FBI has been looking for this danger. Meanwhile, you have these people front and center that are saying death to America. My first guest is an investigative journalist and founder and editor of theforeigndesk.com, Lisa Duftari. Thanks for joining us. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Before we talk about Israel Hamas in Iran, are you surprised by any of this, that you're seeing this growing no. movement of chanting no. death to America here in America? What's crazy is that people ask me, can you believe that this is going on since October 7th? And I tell them it's absolutely been much longer than that. As an investigative journalist, I used to go undercover on some of our best universities, some of our state universities, meaning taxpayer money is going to these universities where they would allow the same free speech you spoke about to allow imams and other people who were so radicalized to stand in the middle of campus. And I saw this with my own eyes and say, you must launch a jihad against the United States and against the Americans who are around you. And this is how I began my career. This was about maybe 20 years ago. I was still a graduate student and I would do this as my undercover work. You, there was Hamas money flowing into US uh, American campuses. They have been working on this for years. October 7th only unveiled what was already happening underneath the surface. And many of us weren't paying attention to this and now are very surprised to see, oh my God, there, it, it's not just about Israel. It's not about the land. It's not, it's, it has nothing to really do with the military war that's going on in the Middle East. This has everything to do with anti-American jihadism, which is guns pointed not just at Israel, but also at the United States, our assets in the region, and also here at home. If you had to guess what political party these people normally support, would it be Republican or Democrat? Right. So this is this is a very, very important question that you ask, because, look, we find extremisms in, in both parties right across the board. Right now, the reason why we are seeing a pivot uh, in Biden's Israel policy, and I will stop here to, because I know a lot of people have a lot of questions. Don't we pay so much aid to Israel so we have every right to say blah, 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 and tell Israel and micromanage that war? No, we are in a, in a strategic relationship with Israel because it serves us both. It's a reciprocal relationship of strategy and security. They are our main and democratic ally in the Middle East. That is why we are in a relationship with Israel, and it has never mattered what party is in the White House. Foreign policy has to be nonpartisan, bipartisan, however you want to look at it, because again, it serves our mutual interests, it serves our international interests to be in a relationship with Israel. That being said, the reason why we are now seeing a pivot by the White House is because there are elements in the Democrat Party, the leftists, who do not, not only will, will they be uh, satisfied with an, a bit of a pivot from our pro-Israel stance, they don't want Israel on the map. Uh, so when we're seeing this kind of change, this, the, the most unfortunate thing in terms of American politics right now is that Israel's war has taken place in the same year that we have a presidential election. Because it is so dangerous to change our, our foreign policy, to change our Middle Eastern policy, to turn on our friends in Israel, when in fact our security here at home, 
Our security relies on Israel's war against Hamas. Our security relies on taming and containing and deterring Iran's regime, which is supporting Hamas and Hezbollah and Palestinian Islamic Jihad. And these, you know, these, and I'm, I'm so happy you're asking such great questions because this is the information that most American voters don't have to connect the dots like this to understand where we stand in terms of our foreign policy. The base of the Republican Party, MAGA is bigger than Donald Trump, okay? Donald Trump just stepped in into the spotlight of what the base of the Republican Party wanted. America first, 10th Amendment, law of the land, lower taxes, more limited government. That was the purge inside the Republican Party. This uncommitted, whatever they want to call themselves, led by people like Rashida Tlaib, is that on the left, but no one's calling that radical. That what, what the base of the Republican Party wants is constitutionalism. They seem to want, I don't know, uh, bringing right. down the whole systems. Right. It, there's an intersection here between the communists and these, these radicals over here. They want the destruction of the United States, and they are a function of the Democrat Party. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's a destruction of the United States from every sector, whether you look at the economy, you look at schools, you look at the relationship between parents and their children, you look at the relationship between people and the police people and you know the, the university system, um, all of it, it has entered so many different parts of society. And now when we see our foreign policy looming over, all of a sudden, we're the bad ones. They're the good ones. So Osama bin Laden is someone to look up to, but our founding fathers are people we should be ashamed of. And when you really look again, connecting the dots, when people would say, like myself, would write op-eds about this for years now, people think it's conspiracy theory. But now that you're actually watching it unfold on the streets of New York and Los Angeles, when you're watching it on our university campuses, when students have to hide because they're Jewish, you know, colleges like UPenn and Cornell, where they used to not allow Jews in because too many of them were getting in. It was a, like a reverse aff affirmative action. Those same students are now not applying to those schools because they don't feel safe. How is that American? I mean, the same people I'm, who are I'm complaining. Gonna, I'm going to run out of time here. We're going to have to part two of this and go through the Abraham Accords and the sanctions on Iran and Biden lifting them. But I'm out of time here. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. All right. Coming up in my argument, the 10th Amendment, federal abortion ban, Trump's video. We're going to tackle it. That's next.